What's up, guys? Welcome back to another Glory Boys podcast. Yo. I'm Darren. And I'm Austin. And we are your hosts today, and we're excited. What are we talking about today? Today, we are just going to give you a little bit of an inside look on our process for editing wedding films. Let's go. Let's roll the intro. Come on. All right, before we dive into our crazy thought process behind putting together wedding films, what is your favorite thing to do outside of creative? Mm, well, like what's your favorite activity that's not shooting, not editing, not singing, playing, dancing, frolicking through the fields in the in the forest? Well, I was going to say frolicking through the fields in the forest, but <laughs> since you said I can't use that one, um, I would have to go... <laughs> I'd have to go with probably playing video games. Nice. Which is whatever. But I mean, yeah, it's I like a, playing video games. It's a an lot. activity. Yeah. yeah if you fun. know me, you know this. And uh, <laughs> my wife also happens to like playing video games, which is dope. And yeah, so this works. Um, her and I play Fortnite together kind of to relax. Um, we, we definitely watch TV, but instead of watching TV, I think most of the time we'll just play Fortnite together or Rocket League or yeah. favorite game of all time. Man, I'm going to sound so nerdy. Who cares? Guild Wars. I don't, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> I know. Nobody <laughs> probably does. Hey, if you know what Guild Wars is, please shoot me a message. I would love to hear from you. But does what your about, wife know what that is? Uh, yeah. Because of you or did she play it? Because of me. Oh, yeah. nice. No, it's pretty nerdy. And what's your wife's favorite game? Kingdom Hearts. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She's obsessed with Kingdom Hearts. Yeah. So, yeah. Dang. What about you? What, what activities do you like to do? Activities. Um, Man. Other than mowing your lawn. That, you know, it that's sounds... That's like Darren's like ideal like night at home. Yeah, He's like, just I think I'm going to go home and mow my lawn. Mow some weeds. Maybe mow my lawn maybe, a little bit. Hey, you know, if I'm feeling a little frisky, I'll go to Menards and grab a bag <laughs> of mulch, a fresh black mulch bag and just oh, pour man. that bad boy over my yard. Adulting. No. Um, although I do like to like listen to podcasts and mow my lawn, it is super relaxing. Um, I do thoroughly enjoy a nice like summer evening um, round of disc golf. Mm. So that's really fun. Um, I know that we've kind of learned to love the the sport together and yeah. we play with a lot of our other friends that are super into it, but it's just, there's something about being outside, you get a ton of steps in um, and then it's a, it's a pretty big challenge. Um, yeah. A lot of people think it's kind of silly, um, but it's throwing a Frisbee at a, you know, yeah. a basket of chains, <laughs> but it's, it's it has really, like the same skill ceiling as golf, but it's free. <laughs> it's so much cheaper than golf. It's, it is a lot cheaper and it's just fun. Um, you get to get outside. And, uh, so that's, that's super, super fun for me. Um, just being outside when yeah. it's nice out. Um, we don't get a lot of months that are super nice here in Nebraska. So I just enjoy outside. Yeah. But I also like video games too. Um, I just busted out my PS2 recently and kind of been nice. pl like playing some like OG games. And I just picked up a ATV Off-Road Fury 4, which it's a it's a four wheeling game that you just ramp stuff and do yeah. tricks like do oh yeah I remember knack -knack ATV Off-Road Fury and backflips. And I want to I've been looking for SSX Tricky because I want to have another game night where we hang out and play that game because that game is so fire. Yeah, we just uh, hung out last week and had we played Tony Hawk. Was it again? Pro, uh, well, we played American Wasteland. American Wasteland. But I have just about all of the Tony Hawk games. I was a huge skateboarder guy, so I loved all the skateboarding games, and we had a blast. We actually made a character to resemble exactly Austin. Same haircut, like same like crew neck sweater, and same vans, and like it, it was a blast. We had a lot of fun. So activities. Now you know find what we like to do. Find some activities. That's, that's fun. right. And healthy. Yeah. So that's just some of them, um, obviously, yep. but. Um, we can kind of dive into today's episode. Yeah. And as kind of what I would say, you're kind of our, I would consider you our lead wedding editor. Mm -hmm. um, most of the films that you would see were probably primarily edited by Darren. I'm just going to kind of ask you some questions, I think, Do it. Um, to walk people through not so much the template because there is no template. Yeah. We don't edit every wedding film the same. Nope. We don't ever reuse music. We don't have like a cookie cutter template. Yeah. Um, we found things that work for us and that we really enjoy that we'll use, you know, often or on more than just one film. But overall though, I feel like one of our specialties and strengths as a company 
is curating the wedding film to the couple. Yeah. So we're going to go to the very beginning. You just got footage, put footage on your solid state drive. You plug it into your computer. You start up a library. What is your first thing? Like what's your first goal? What was your first, what are you thinking about? Yeah. There's two directions that I would go. One, if I shot the wedding, it's going to be a little bit different. So I had been there shooting hands-on. I'd met the couple, interacted with them for an entire day. So I already kind of have a good idea of what type of couple they are, who they are, their personalities, the kind of music they played at their dance, um, the, you know, the decorations, all that stuff. It seems silly, but their day and the feel of their day really, really impact the way that we start the wedding film and edit the wedding film. Absolutely. If I didn't shoot the wedding film, um, I would actually go in through the film and really just scrub through clips and like learn and see the visuals of the ceremony, see the visuals of the reception, the dance footage and the flow and the kind of vibe of that. I would um, listen to some of the letters or the ceremony and hear their voices and hear how they're you know talking to each other. If they're funny, are they more sentimental? Are they mm. really loud and obnoxious and funny and goofy or whatever. Overall, I just really want to learn as much as I can about the couple before I really even start adding clips to the film. Yeah. Yeah. I would say, um, the best example or one of the best examples I think that I've seen of a wedding film that you do, um, or did was Taylor and Jake's wedding. Um, you know, Jake was a rapper back in the day and we show up to the wedding and like, all of his homies are wearing they're they're wearing gold chains and Gucci belts and they're mm-hmm. drinking out of a three hundred dollar bottle of tequila and like it was just it had that swagger and like they were like gambling and like yeah and so Darren literally made a like a hip hop music video <laughs> we recorded him into his iPhone doing a voiceover to yeah. replace the voiceover that was already in it so we customized the track for the couple yeah and that was crazy it literally like it just couldn't have been any more unique to that couple. Yeah. It was a song we would never use in any other wedding film, but we, you heard it and you're like, this is perfect. Yeah. For I think some of the lyrics was, I don't really care. I'm going yeah. to be a billionaire. Like, I don't. <laughs> and so like it fit, like they're hustlers. And so it fit yeah, their it personalities really so cool. well. Um, and so I think that's great. Like getting to know the couple beforehand, obviously yeah. most of the time you're going to be there shooting the wedding, yeah. um, at least the weddings that we have done. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's a great point. Like if you're not there, just watch through clips yep. until you feel like you have a good understanding of who these people are. Yeah. Um, so from there, so you kind of have a good idea. Um, I know sometimes it doesn't necessarily things happen. There's happy accidents in editing. Yeah. I know a lot of the sure. times totally. where maybe you didn't intend to stumble across a song, but you hear it and you're mm-hmm. like, Oh, this is perfect. Yeah. But aside from that, you feel like you have a good idea of who the couple is before like you start just putting clips in there. What's your first step in the process? My favorite part, finding a song, Mm. which is kind of funny. I actually do really enjoy finding the music for the film because it's, I think it's probably one of the most important things. Mm -hmm. If the shots are awesome and the song sucks, it's just not going to be a good film or fun film to watch. And so although we do add a lot of sound effects and in-camera audio and things that um, we'll kind of carry the film outside of the actual song. The song is so, so important. Mm-hmm. So we download an instrumental um, stem and the um, w- the lyrics stem. And so we'll have both. And then we can kind of cut in and out and implement some audio. But yeah, the audio is super important. And so lately it's been really hard because we've put out quite a bit of films now in the last three and a half years. And we spend upwards of four hours looking for a singular um, track that opens the film. Yep. And so we've looked on all platforms. We've had music bed for a long time. We love it. We have st- Soundstripe. We do have Epidemic Sound. We've been looking into Artlist and we've been looking into Marmoset and some other platforms. There's a lot out there. Um, Artlist, did I say that? Mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean, there's just so many. Um, but for some reason, it seems like it's getting harder by the day of finding that beautiful custom track that we want to use. We will not reuse a song. I literally will never do it. I can't Mm. bring myself to do it. (laughs) Yeah. It's a lot easier to build a story Mm -hmm. with dynamic and all of that 
if you have a song that already has all of that. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, it's really tough. You can like put together an awesome film without music and then you can add a track to it and it probably won't work. Mm -hmm. um, but if you start with the right song and you can kind of just, I feel like we just feel it when it's the right song. Yeah. Like, oh, this yeah. is the one, if it's the vibe, yep. it has like the dynamic that we want, yep. which that's a huge part of it. Yes. Um, because we, we really play off of the builds of the song yep. for where we're going with yep. the film. Yes. Um, you know, I would say most wedding filmmakers aren't at a place where they can afford to do custom scores for their wedding films, sure. which is like, that would be awesome yeah. to, to be able to say, you know, I want a six minute track that has a build at two minutes and four minutes. And that's yeah. where I'm going to, you know, put the ceremony and that's where I'm going to put the first look or whatever. Yeah. That would be really great, but we don't really have the luxury of doing that Yeah, um, for tons of wedding films. And so you really have to find the song that has the components that you need um, to build the dynamic of the film off of. So you found a song, what what do you do next? Yeah, so next, um, I'm probably starting now to just grab a couple drone shots, grabbing those establishing shots to really set the scene of the film. So if you know the bride is getting getting ready, get away, get fly! I'll freaking chop your face off. I'm a fly ninja. I can catch him pretty well um, with chopsticks. Just kidding, you can't <laughs> do that. Anyway, um, I really want to set the the stage and um, if the bride is getting ready at a home or a hotel or whatever that looks like, I'm gonna use some of the establishing shots from that location to really make the bride, when she watches it, feel like, oh, I remember that place. I remember my stay there. I remember, you know, the breakfast I had there. I remember the makeup artist, you know, whatever shots that we get, we usually shoot the heck out of that stuff and make sure we have enough and we don't always use it all, but mm -hmm. it's nice to have. So I'm, I'm usually doing like that in the first, uh, from zero to 25 seconds, just putting really pretty slow-mo um, shots that I really think are beautiful, that are going along with the song. And then sometimes I'll honestly even just throw up the titles and start looking for fonts. I don't know why I don't do that last. I used to, but I think it inspires me more when I get the front 20 to 30 seconds finalized and really like locked in. Um, because it kind of catapults me into the rest of the film. And so I'll find a font that I really like. I, I actually oftentimes will change the font three to four times mm -hmm. before I really, really like it. But I like clean, simple, minimal fonts. And I try to go into these more creative, more um, exciting looking fonts. And I, I tend to just go back to the couple that we really love. Yep. That's more simple and clean and minimal. That's just kind of our vibe and our flow currently. So yeah, I'll, I'll do that. And so I, I really build that first 20 to 30 seconds, um, color it as best as I can, um, get the music going, sound effects. So after I kind of wrap up that 20 to 30 seconds, I feel really good. I'll actually go back to the beginning. I'll play it and I'll feel when I, I need to add some emotive, really beautiful audio from the bride, from a speech, something that's really, really like heart softening and something that's going to pull you into like, wow, this is going to be a beautiful film. Um, is kind of one of our signature things that we've been doing for a while now is a few seconds in, you know, you get hit with this beautiful song, beautiful visuals. And then all of a sudden some kind of emotional, um, driven, powerful statement from mom, from dad, from bride, from groom, mm -hmm. whatever that is. And, and really grab the attention of the, the viewers. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of times we'll use the the letters that the bride or groom yep. write to each other right. um, to kind of open up the film because they're writing them from the perspective of we're not married yet, yep. we're getting married today. And so it just makes sense. Um, and something that you said is like the first 30 seconds, I feel like can be, can take as long as yeah. the next like two, three minutes oh, sometimes. Sure. Yeah, 100%. Um, so I love that. Like part of the process f when you edit a wedding film is you really take your time on those first 30 seconds. Yeah. Just making sure that they're awesome and they're setting you up for success in the rest of the film. Yep. I know a lot of times you'll also add, we'll typically do like a title slide at mm -hmm. the beginning. Yep. And so um, something that you're super intentional with is placement of the text. Yeah. We'll, we'll typically open it up with the couple's names. Yep. You know, a glory visuals wedding film. Um, we'll typically put our name at the beginning. Yep. Um, similar to what you do with anything else, music video yep. directed by totally. is pretty, pretty typical. So, yeah. um, but well, like, I love your intentionality with that and where it's placed and mm -hmm. the framing and what type of shots you're putting that over and all that stuff. So totally. 
Yeah. Um, there's no rhyme or reason of how or why we just kind of do it. One thing I did forget to say is I think we sometimes shoot so much content. We've gotten better at this, but we shoot so many different types of shots and, you know, we can really be like super enamored by this shot and this shot and almost forget to look at the rest of them. So something I've been really, really diligent on is making sure I scrum through every single clip mm-hmm. that was taken. Cam A, Cam B, make sure that I'm not missing anything because if there's something in there, there's a second that I can put into 120. I don't want to miss out on a really great moment. So I'll yeah. just make sure to look through all of the footage. Yeah, that's definitely something that you do a better job of than I do. Typically, I'll I'll give what, Darren a wedding film <laughs> that I've been working on and he'll be like, hey, did you see these <laughs> these shots? And I'm like... I guess I must have missed them. So you do a really good job of like scrubbing through every single clip. Okay, so you have a song, get the first 30 seconds down Mm -hmm. without walking through, you know, like I said, there's no template. So it's not the exact same every time. Yep. Um, But really like, I think one thing that we do really well are building the dynamics off of the song and then transitions music wise. Yeah. So... Yeah, I guess maybe talk a little bit about that if you have any, like, if you think about it beforehand with the first song, if do you listen to the whole song first and kind of plan out, like, where you're going to put different moments and yeah. where you're going to transition in different moments of the day? This is where sometimes, like, the creativity, like, craziness happens, where you're about running out of the first song, you're pretty happy with your first two and a half minutes of your film, but you're really ready to change the dynamic of the film. You really want to switch the mood from really beautiful and soft and inspiring and cute and emotional to like fun and celebratory and exciting and really, really vivid and bright and fun. So you can do that in a lot of different ways. And I think that's where it can get kind of fun where the song can die out or say you're your first song has a big swell at the end. You can really utilize that swell and use Cathedral to like have it decay and and delay out and then start some audio of like the bride saying something funny or, you know what I mean? There's a lot of different ways to do it without actually showing you. Every different every film that we've done has had some kind of different transition, whether you find an, uh, another song that's in the same key mm-hmm. and blend them in a way that it sounds like the same song. We take a lot of pride in our ability to know music and love music. And so we are really intentional with how we cut songs on beat on the right time, also cutting the first track and and making sure that it marries with the second track really well. And so, yeah, there's all kinds of different ways to do it. But I think uh, that's where the fun happens is uh, trying to, it can be frustrating, but trying to be really creative with transitioning that slow, beautiful movement into something a little bit more fast and fun and exciting. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. And I would say this is where, like you said, you can get creative with it. So you don't necessarily have to always start on a beautiful, flowy song. Yeah, totally. I mean, like I said, with Jake and Taylor's, the first the first thing you hear is brant, dun, 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 dun. Brant, like it's dun, dun. a it's a hip hop song with yeah. freaking horns and like That's crazy. brass instruments playing a trap beat. So <laughs> there's different things you can play around with. Like, I mean, all of this that we've heard from Darren, like you have to know your couples. Um, and really just get to understand them and then let that just inform these decisions and like, let that create ideas within you as you're looking for music and just be open to breaking the template. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say, you know, maybe 70% of our films kind of follow the same similar progressions where it's a beautiful flowy song, Mm -hmm. then it transitions into a more fun song for dance stuff. Yep. The other 30%, whether that means that the couple just is, has something unique about them that we want to highlight in the film. Yep. For example, right now, you're working on one where the couple is obsessed with Star Wars and Dungeons yeah. and Dragons. Mm-hmm. And we literally shot footage of them with the Pavo tubes that are sitting behind us turned to <laughs> blue and red, like f- lightsaber fighting with them yeah. at the end of the day. And so like, that's something that I know is going to be super fun for you to edit because yeah. the couple has that unique personality. And I would say that's, one of the best things that you do when you edit your wedding films is you bring that personality out. Yeah. Um, it's fun. Cool. So we touched on kind of your mindset going in yep. to a wedding film. Yep. You find the song first. Um, that way you can kind of build the rest of it. We talked about kind of transitions. Let's talk about the ceremony. Yeah. Or 
I mean, we kind of touched on the beginning transitions, like in the middle of that first song, you're going to have the ceremony to yeah. some degree. Yep. Um, how do you approach that? How much of it do you put in there? You know, what parts of it do you choose? Mm -hmm. And yeah, what's your yeah. approach to that? So every single wedding is different. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes you have a hour and a half Catholic wedding and they just kind of recite what they're asked um, and don't really do anything personal. So it's nothing, nothing against that. Um, it just isn't as exciting to put into the film. We we like putting emotional cinematic wedding films together so that sometimes just using some of that isn't going to be the best option, but we'll still deliver that to our couples. But um, sometimes the lighting is really bad, um, whether you're inside or whether it's in the middle of the field and there's no shade and you just kind of have to work with what you got. But if I would say this, if it doesn't look super great, um, just be sure to get a lot of B-roll of the couple because in this moment, you still want to implement some of the audio of them saying their vows, whether they're traditional or whether they write their own. Mm -hmm. um, I still like to make sure that some of that stuff is in there because it's it's important. It's the moment leading up to when they became one. Yeah. And so we'll always do that. And then, like I said, if it looks really beautiful, we'll maybe hang on to the shot of them actually talking and saying their vows. If not, maybe we'll cover it with something um, that we captured earlier in the day of just some really beautiful portrait session stuff. How much of the ceremony do you typically include? Or yeah. Obviously so, it depends, but. I think after you do enough of these, you kind of know what's necessary and what's not. And what's, if it's starting to feel too long, I'll literally watch it. I'm like, do I feel like this like inspired and excited to like see this? Or is it feeling like I'm just putting it in there to put it in there? Mm -hmm. I kind of, I really removed that kind of thought process of, oh, it's the ceremony. The whole thing has to be in there. Yeah. Or, all, so much of this needs to be in there. I just don't think that's true. And we've really just, whatever looks and feels the best mm -hmm. and whatever blesses the bride and groom the most, I'm going to put it in there. And that can be a wide variety of things. Yeah, for sure. Well, and one nice thing that helps with that too is we do deliver the ceremony yeah. with all of our wedding films. Yeah. So even if there was a part that didn't make the cut for the wedding film, they still can go back and watch it. Totally. Um, so that I think helps um, yep. couples still be able to enjoy their full ceremony if they'd like to. Yeah. Um, another thing too is I would say at least I think every single film, um, we do our best incorporate vows mm -hmm. if we can yeah. um, because that's the couple talking to, the, to each other. That's yep. a really important part of the day. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes if they're just standard vows and they're just really not that exciting. Mm -hmm. We won't put them in there, but I think most every film we do. Totally. Um, and then when they announce, and I now present to you, yep. Mr. and Mrs. King. Yeah, like, we, we pretty much use we that. We put that in every wedding film. I every would say. wedding film, because it's the perfect little kicker to, okay, this part of the film's done. Now we're going to party. Yeah. And so it's, it's always fun. Um, we've had <laughs> priests and pastors and friends that uh, officiate say like, the wrong name or mispronounce mm. or it, it gets kind of weird. So sometimes we won't use it because yeah. it's like in. Oh, I did forget about that. Yeah. So, but other than that, that, that only happened probably three weddings yeah. so far, but they were awkward. And, and so we just didn't use that part, but it is nice to, and now we pronounce Mr. And Mrs. Whatever. <sighs> yep. And then it carries into some party song that we hit right off the bat. We're on the party bus. We're heading to the portrait sessions with the, the bride, bridal party you know we're just flipping the the energy from this beautiful exciting to celebratory yep yeah there's a whole a whole dynamic of the wedding day that you have to incorporate into yeah. and it's it's there on the day too so you're really like you're really trying to re let them relive the day yeah and so um transitions getting creative with transitions i love I love how we transition yeah. um, yep. in our wedding films. I think almost every time we yep. try to find a way to transition in a unique way or mm -hmm. a way we haven't done before. Um, I love how Bray transitioned yep. from the wedding film. Um, she used a part of the DJ, like yell. It was really cool how he in, like introduced the couple yeah. back onto the dance floor. And then she like had this really long, like Joe and Allie Mancusa. And then she like cut it off with had a reverb tail and then it like sw just switched gears and went into a speech. It yeah. was just super cool. Yeah. Um, little things like that. I yep. just, I really appreciate um, and think that's part of what sets our wedding films apart. I agree. Um, 
cool. Any, th- any other thoughts? Um, hopefully. Yeah. Now we're kind of just moving into the dance and, and just the extra fun little portrait session stuff. And, and then we move to the exit and yeah. the exit, uh, looks different. There's a sparkler exit. There's, you know, all kinds of different things that people do. And, uh, sometimes they don't do an exit. So you're like, okay, we always end our films with the exits right. and, and not always, but we usually save like the most epic shots yeah. for the ender yep. because we just want it to feel like, wow, this mm-hmm. is insane. This is so beautiful. And we'll just really wrap up the film with that just super extra cinematic kind of minimalist and, and really out there shots because we want it to just end with the bang and, uh, we'll do that and we'll, um, throw some text over, um, usually put their last names at the end. And, uh, sometimes we'll put, you know, the best is yet to come or, you know, something really sweet, um, in the film just to kind of keep them inspired and excited every time they watch it. Yep. Yeah. And even down to that small detail of the best is yet to come, or this is only the beginning or whatever, like we don't, we don't put those in every film. Mm-hmm. We don't, I don't think we've ever repeated the same statement. Um, uh, I think I have. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> but, but again, it's like, it's informed by who the, the couple is. Totally. Um, not all of them. It doesn't make sense for every couple. Yeah. Um, and so I think the underlying theme in all of this is to just do what feels right for that specific couple. Yeah. Um, but hopefully this has given some insight on just the thought process. And it's, it's tough because it is such a ambiguous thing. You don't, it's not a step-by-step process, but there are some things that we'll do consistently that will help us. I mean, you referenced Jake and Taylor's wedding film a few times. And I think if just a, a pretty standard, like Midwestern, you know, bride saw that film, maybe she wouldn't hire us because it was a little too edgy for her. Well, the thing is, we we don't custom tailor the films for us and yeah. our style. Yep. We we have a style and a way we color and a way we put together our films, but we really custom tailor them to the couple mm-hmm. because, again, like this isn't for us. Right. This is for them. Yep. Yeah. Again, we do have a style and and a way we like to do things, but we want it to match and feel like the couple. It's for them. They're gonna watch it for the rest of their lives, and uh, we want it to really bring the bride and groom back to the day and the way that it sounded, the way that it felt, the way that it looked, I want them to be, to be sitting on their couch bawling in 20 years, just being like, wow, we had the best wedding of our lives. And, uh, that's our goal every single time. So I would say to some of the brides that maybe see our work and think maybe we're a little too edgy. Um, I would challenge you to say that we're not, and that we have, um, just what it takes to make the best wedding film for you Mm -hmm. and your wedding day. Yeah. That's really good. Mic drop. Well, thanks Darren. This was uh, very (laughs) insightful (laughs) and uh, hopefully this has encouraged you. If you're a wedding filmmaker, um, hopefully this has helped you maybe just define your process or at least your thought process when approaching yep. wedding films. Yeah, guys, thank you so much for listening. Um, it's true honor. Uh, we love what we get to do. And so we hope that we inspired you a little bit to maybe think about your workflow and your wedding films. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment, hit us up on social media. Yep. Um, and if you are watching this on YouTube, please hit the bell for notifications, subscribe, subscribe to our channel and just, you know, be sure to uh, stop by every once in a while because we are dropping new content every single Wednesday, every single Friday. Mm. And, uh, and sometimes we drop surprise episodes and surprise things all the time. Yeah. So guys, thank you so much for being here. We love you so much. Thank you for listening. If you're listening on Apple podcasts, uh, hit us with a, a review. We do have a ton of five-star reviews and we love reading them. We're so blessed by them. Yeah. We do have one one-star. <laughs> we don't really- Doesn't count. Doesn't really make Overall sense. rating is still five stars. That's so true. It doesn't count. It's math, you know? <laughs> so, so thank you guys for those five stars. You guys yeah. are such a blessing to us. So thank you guys so much for watching and listening and we'll see you guys in the next episode. See you later. See you later.